This video is sponsored by Masca Products. This is my new mobile tool cart. It has a lot of storage options on it. It houses four big power tools. I'm gonna show you all the storage options this offers, and then I'll show you how I made it. If you're interested in building one like this, link in the description to the build plans. When I started building this, I had two things in mind. I, I needed a place to house my planer and my jointer, as well as some extra storage. And the second thing I had in mind was the garage shop woodworker like me. I'm in a small space, so I needed to maximize storage options on a cart like this. So with that in mind, what I did was I have one side that only has available part storage and it, you can get multiple sizes of these small parts organizers to fit in this area. This is a Milwaukee brand. I think it runs about $25. It's not the pack out, so it's fairly affordable. Right under that, I've got clamp storage for up to 12 inch size clamps. Jorgensen, Bessie, uh, any of that will fit on these uh, nice inset clamp holders and that keeps them out of the way and they're not going to fall off of there when you're moving this around on the right side i have a drawer that houses my ppe which is my safety glasses my hearing protection and my dust mask the reason i have so many safety glasses is i got tired of looking for them so i just bought a pack right under that i've got quart size paint storage or finished storage in this side because a lot of people don't have places to house that kind of stuff and a board butter or anything like that Right under that, I have enough space to house can, rattle cans. So we got spray paint, finishes, uh, anything like that can be housed right there. So on this end, I, add, I wanted to add a pull and push handle as well as some extra storage down there. So we got shelves, but in these corners, I didn't want to leave that blank. I added these battery holders. You can get them from Shop Nation on Etsy. I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description. On the end, we've just got shelves here just to hold various items that you may need around in the shop. So I've got my little cordless drill up there, uh, tape measure, square, things like that. And right here, I added just some blocks down through there that's gonna house my 24 inch rules. They kept getting in the way laying on the table saw, so I wanted to house them in a place they'll stay protected and I can easily access them. And then we have another parts organizer on this side. I have screws and things like that in there. And in this drawer, I've got all my push blocks for my jointer that I may need. And then we have doors here that open up into a cabinet. On the right, I've got my air compressor. On my left, I've got my spindle sander and the old leaf blower. One of the reasons I use part spins on this side instead of drawers is so I can take those out when I'm planing boards. I can plane and when it comes out the exit, I can pass it right back through underneath through that empty spot. That's gonna make planing things much easier because a lot of times they get up here on top, will fall off or just be in the way. So I think that's gonna be nice. To make this, all you need is three sheets of three quarter inch plywood and pocket holes construction. The only other thing I used was a round dowel rod for this push handle. That's it, super simple. A beginner level project that looks more advanced than it actually is. Let me show you. When I'm breaking down plywood, I really like to use these bench cookies, uh, these Rockler or bench dog ones. The Rockler ones have been cheaper here lately. I got several of these. I'll stick them under the piece of plywood that I'm fixing to cut. And then on each side of that cut so that it doesn't fall, it's just a great way to support it. And then you don't have to worry about uh, pinching or kickback or anything like that. It's just an excellent way to cut this stuff. If you don't have a track saw, no worries. You can still break this down with circular saw. Now you notice when I finished that cut, this piece didn't fall, it didn't move, it didn't do anything. And that's one of the things I learned. If you could support this piece, the cuts come out much, much cleaner, as you can see. Ah, it's not supported. You saw that, didn't you? I forgot to support it on this side, exactly what I said not to do, and I did it. I, I had those setting over there, the bench cookies were right there, right beside it, and I just... Mm, that's all right. It barely got into that one, so I think we'll be all right. So I wanted to make sure all of my pieces were exactly the same length. Even though I cut them with the track saw, they were extremely close, but they may have been a 30 second or so out. So I set my fence at 29 and 15 sixteenths and also used the Jessam stock guys to help pull everything to the fence. So I made sure all of these were exactly the same. This will help the final fit when I start assembling everything. So now I'm just gonna do like a dry fit and get a kind of an overall measurement because I need the height to be a certain thing so that I can use this as an outfeed table when my planer's on there. And I'm just gonna use these nice little corner clamps. These help hold everything nice and sturdy while you just kind of fit and finish everything. Here's a power tip for you. You buy sanded plywood from like Home Depot, Lowe's, my local hardware store, you'll see. A lot of times they'll have these fills in there. They don't really look that great. I try to turn those to the inside when I can. Pocket hole time. My favorite thing to join boards together with is pocket holes. I have been called the pocket hole king for a while. I call myself that actually. This is the Masca M2 pocket hole jig and it is a very solid jig. This is a gold edition. They don't, they don't sell these gold ones, but they do have gray ones. It's super easy to set up with those markings you see on the front of that. You just set that to three quarters of an inch because we're using three quarter inch plywood. Set your bit to the depth with the included um, turret that they use to set it up with. 
Super simple. And this is a very solid jig. Work supports on every end. The dust collection is excellent. Drills nice pocket holes and it's got a lifetime warranty and backed by a really good company, Mask of Products. I've been working with them for several years and really, really enjoy working with them. Check the link in the description to get your Mask of Pocket Hole Jig so you can make awesome projects like this. Assembly is super easy. We're just using inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue uh, down this joint. I like to glue all these joints even though we are screwing them. Just gives a little more stability, keeps it from squeaking and racking and stuff like that once it's all together. One of a kind glue spreader. If you use a lot of pocket holes, this is one handy little clamp. This will go right into that pocket hole and it will, you just flush that up, clamp it tight, and then you can attach these other pocket holes without anything shifting and moving on you. So I'm adding a shelf that'll be just under the top and just to give it some rigidity, some stability, and to have to, a pass through that if I wanted to pass a board through, I could do that while I'm jointing or planing, I'm sorry. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. However, you don't wanna put it in now because I've learned from lessons. If I put this shelf in, I won't be able to drive pocket hole screws up into the top. So I'm gonna put the top on first and then we'll put the shelf in with the pocket holes on the bottom because that'll be much easier to install. So this, once I get the top on, we'll use these corner braces to help hold the shelf up in position. We can get it positioned correctly and then attach it and not have to worry about trying to hold things up. Just want to make sure all this stuff is flush before tightening the clamp down both the side as well as the face and then i've just got a parallel clamp here that i'm just applying just light pressure while i drive the screws so now we can install our shelf now that the top's on there so what i've done is i'm just going to take these corner clamps again put those in there i've cut a couple of sticks that are those scrap plywood that drops from earlier 20 and a half inches long what that's going to do is give me a five inch opening once the plywood is on there so It'd be a nice little opening to use for whatever you want. The great thing about this is if you follow the plans, it will work for this setup. In other words, a spindle sander that'll slide in and out, take it and put it on your bench. If you don't have a spindle sander or don't want to dedicate that much space to it, you can put the shelf wherever you want and then you could have more storage as far as height wise or divide the storage, whatever you want to do with your tool cart. Cutting these sticks makes it much easier to set these up. You can measure down too, but I like to use the stick. That way everything's exactly the same. Then I can just flush the corner clamps up with the top of the stick and tighten them down. And I know they're exactly where they need to be. Somehow reason I feel like I messed up. I messed up. Typical project, expect mistakes. I miscalculated is what happened. I need to cut a piece that will fit outside to outside, which is 40 and three eighths. And I cut this 40 inches and that made it too narrow. Next piece. Because of my error, some of the veneer is stuck to this one. So I'm just gonna take a chisel and just pop that off so that everything is flat where it needs to be when we put the new top on. The correct top. I won't bore you with this. Same process, just like we put on the wrong top, except for this is the right one. Second time the charm, maybe? That's more like it. All right, now that I know it's gonna fit, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on each side. And try not to make a mess, put it in. Yeah, that's all right.
If you don't have any of these corner clamps or any way to do that to support this shelf, just cut four scrap pieces the length that you want, and then you can block those up underneath and set your shelf on that while you attach it. That way you don't have to try to hold it on a line or anything like that. It just makes installation much easier. So my original idea was to take a piece of quarter inch plywood and cover the entire back. I've changed my mind because I think we can maximize the usefulness of this cart by using this space for storage. Now what I want to do is cut a piece of plywood to inset inside this rectangle and then we're going to use this as a storage area for clamps and bottles, glue, things like that. I think we can make it a multi-function storage area. It's kind of a thought I had during the build or while I was thinking about this build, so let's do it. The good news is we can use the top that we accidentally messed up. I accidentally messed up. I can use that here and not waste any plywood. I've deemed this the back because I wanted to. We're gonna turn the pocket holes to the inside because whenever we put our drawers and everything on the other side, you're not gonna be able to see those pocket holes. If you turn them the other way like this, you would be able to see them. Ideally, I would wanna glue this. However, because I've got 14 pocket holes on here, there should be plenty to lock it in place. Look at that fit, like a glove. Yes, sir. I like it when stuff fits. Now what this is going to do is several things for this piece. It's going to give it structure. It's going to make it solid so it's not going to sway. It's also going to strengthen this shelf and then when we put our divider in here, in return, strengthen that shelf so it shouldn't bow at all on the top when we have all of this secured in place. And this is going to allow us to have some storage back here. What I've got to figure out now is how much of a ledge I want. I'm thinking four inches. It's kind of my idea, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. Maybe. So for this shelf area, I'm thinking that uh, I know that I need 20, about 24 inches, and that's going to give me plenty of room for the oscillating spindle sander to be able to slide in. If I want to put doors on the front, all that, that'll give me plenty of room, I think. On the back, that'll give me about five inches from the edge, and then if I put a three-quarter inch strip across the front to hold things, probably put another shelf here, it will fit a quart can perfectly, or my glue bottle, or one of these bigger type bond three bottles, stuff like that. A common sized item for the shop should fit in here. Probably do two shelves. I may put a clamp rack down there. Still working on that. I think the easiest thing to do is cut four five inch blocks. That way I'll have something to attach to the back of the shelf so I can push against it while I put the pocket holes in from the other side. Being able to push against those blocks ensures that my piece is gonna be where I want it to be. Now I'm just gonna move two to the center. That way we don't have a bow in the center of it. I've cut this piece to fit exactly the width of our stand, and now I'm gonna slide this in there, and it's also, I just measured right here to get the exact measurement, and I went ahead and drilled pocket holes, three on the bottom, two on the top. What that'll do is add some stability to the top, and if you want to put drawers in here, you'll be able to attach drawers here, and you'll have two banks of drawers. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna do two on this side and two on the other because they're so deep, and then that way it maximizes my storage area. If you're not comfortable with drawers though, you can leave these open if you wanted to. Now we'll just figure out where center is. Looks like about 19 and an eighth each way. Now to attach the pocket hole screws, you're gonna need something like this right angle of drill attachment or impact attachment to be able to get in such tight spaces to drive those pocket holes. If you don't have one of these, they're super cheap and awesome. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested. So I went ahead and cut a strip 19 and an eighth, and what that's gonna do is allow me to lay that in there and ensure that both sides are exactly 19 and 1 eighth when I attach it. That way, there's no guesswork when I go to making drawers, I'll know exactly how big I need to make them. And it should keep this from moving when I start driving those screws. I like to leave it on the opposite side the screws are because the screws are putting pressure that way. And then I also use two clamps on either side just to hold things in place while I drive those screws on either end. Just almost too tight. So I did inset this the thickness of plywood because I'm gonna put a door on this side I know and likely on that side. So when the door closes, it closes onto this and it'll be flush with everything else. It's kind of the idea.
I've cut two pieces for the back. One divider right here in the center. It's just the length and the depth to match this. And then I've got a shelf here that's gonna be pocket holed in. This is the beauty of woodworking because you can customize this to fit your needs. So I'm gonna make this to where it'll hold glue bottles or spray paint cans on the bottom. But the top shelf, if it doesn't fall, still has enough room to set a quart can of paint or stain or finish, something like that right here in this area. And then on that side, I'm going to make a clamp holder rack to fit those clamps or most any F-style clamp that's up to 12 or 14 inches will work. So I'm gonna put this clamp on there just to apply pressure down here where I've got glue and up here where I've got glue until the glue dries and then we'll be able to finish that part out. Just make sure everything's lined up. We're also gonna cut an inch and a half by the 19 and 1 8, the inside dimensions uh, piece of plywood strip. We're gonna just glue those on, just take some band clamps or something, just squeeze clamps to hold those on while the glue dries. That'll give you a ledge so that when you put your finish in there, it won't fall out when you're rolling this around. So I slept on this overnight. I didn't actually sleep on it. I slept on the idea of this organization cart and I started thinking, Man, sometimes uh, when you start adding drawers and things like that to projects, uh, a beginner woodworker may be intimidated by drawers because they're not hard to build, but if you've never built them, it's kind of, it's, it's intimidating, it really is. However, this works <laughs> perfect for that. So if you have some small parts organizers, you can make this area to fit them. Now this one is a Milwaukee job site organizer. It's not a pack out, but it will work for this. And there's some others that I'll link in the description that will fit in this space. Uh, this one right now is sold out. I don't know if they'll have any more available, but there are some DeWalt ones that also fit in here. But if you're intimidated by drawers and things, I actually may leave this here instead of putting drawers in. I have plenty of drawer storage in the shop, but I love these small ports organizers. Now it's time to add the casters. I was originally gonna go with the shorter casters that are on my other cart, but I've decided since I had these already here, they're a little bigger, a little taller, and I think they'll just roll around easier. First thing I'm gonna do is cut out four blocks to mount them to the bottom. Then we're gonna flip our cart on its face. Then we'll just take glue and brad nails and attach one on each corner, and then we'll screw and attach the casters to those. Now it's time to make the doors and drawers. We're gonna use the same plywood and track saw to cut these parts out. I'm gonna do two drawers on one side, and on the other side, I'm just gonna use my small parts organizers. It's gonna give me organization, and I'll be able to take those out when I want to pass boards through when I'm using the planer. Next thing I'm gonna do is build drawers. I'm gonna use a track saw to cut an approximate width, but I'm gonna get the exact width I need on the table saw. Once I get those widths, I'm gonna cut them to length at the miter saw, and then I'm bring them back to the table saw. I love these Craig setup blocks. I can set up the blade exactly one quarter of an inch deep, as well as a quarter inch from the fence. That way when I make these passes, this is what we're gonna cut a slot in there or a dado so that this drawer bottom can slide in there. We're gonna use a quarter inch plywood. The very back piece that you're gonna use, we're gonna cut that off exactly flush with the groove or the top of the groove. Front and back piece, I'm gonna drill some pocket holes because that's how we're gonna join them together. When we assemble them, we're gonna assemble them upside down. We're gonna use a little bit of glue, attach these inch and a quarter pocket hole screws, and then we'll slide the bottom in there and we've got drawers. Here's a little tip. I like to cut the drawer bottoms about a 16th inch less wide than the actual opening and less deep. So that gives me plenty of play to get everything lined up just right. Then I'll just drive a couple of brad nails from the bottom into the drawer and that'll hold it in place. That's all right. Mountain drawer slides is pretty easy. I want the drawer face to be inset like this. So we wanna make sure to use a spare piece or a scrap piece to inset these. Once you have it flush, and then just mark where this is at. It's got a scrap piece on the bottom here just to hold it up off the bottom, and then I can install these. All I have to do is line up this edge with that line. All 
right, here you see me gluing on inch and a half strips that fit right inside those shelves. That's gonna provide a way to hold in cans and spray paint and things like that. Now it's time to make the clamp rack for the left side of the back. I'm gonna take some scrap plywood here and rip them down to four inches wide each, just some random lengths. We're gonna glue two pieces together. Then we're gonna use one piece on the other side and a scrap piece between the two to hold them together. I am cutting a 30 degree angle on the bottom of them and then we're just gonna glue those to the station itself, no screws or brad nails or anything like that are needed in this instance. I did use some CA glue to help them hold faster, but the wood glue is also on there so that it sets permanently. While that glue dries, we're gonna go ahead and put the drawer faces on. I just cut these with about an eighth inch reveal. I've got an eighth inch spacer. When I put drawer faces on in the shop, I just kind of eyeball the reveal left and right. Once I have it about where I want it, I'll just tilt it out, throw a little CA glue. Then we can drive our screws in from the back side and attach that permanent. Now it's time to install the hinges for the doors. I'm using the Craig hinge guide jig here, and it's a very good jig that makes putting hinges on extremely easy. I'm gonna use Blum flush mount hinges because they're easy to install and they're just good hinges. I like using these. If you've not seen Jason Bent's video on this, I'll link that in the description below. He does a very good job explaining how to install these properly. Here I'm using my combination square to mount my drawer pulls. I'm just gonna mount them about an inch away from the edge and about an inch down and just ensure that they're both exactly level because you don't want those off because if those look off, your doors will look off. So now I'm gonna make this shelf slash handle, pull handle for one end of this. And what I've done is I went ahead and cut these all to about three and a half inches wide. And then I have an inch and a quarter dial. I'm gonna use my forcement bit to drill a hole on one end, but I'm not going all the way through. I want that to stop so that the handle doesn't go all the way through. I drill pocket holes in all these pieces and just for assembly, I'm gonna use glue and pocket holes. Just to give the shelves a little stop, I cut these pieces to fit. They're about an inch and a quarter wide and then I just glue them on and put these clamps on there just to hold them to the glue dry. I wanted to maximize storage on the left side of this handle shelf section. So what I did was just take a measurement, the width of the uprights. Then I cut some 45 degree blocks the same width, which is here is three and a half. I took the blocks to the drill press and drilled an inch and a quarter Forstner bit hole through two of them. And then the last one, which is on the bottom, I only put about a half depth hole. In other words, it doesn't go all the way through. Then just some CA glue and glue these in place. This is gonna be a perfect spot to hold my 24 inch rules, which have typically taken up space on the right side of the table saw and they seem to always be in the way. This is gonna store them out of the way and keep them protected. On the right side of this handle shelf, I'm gonna add some battery holders. And I got these from Shop Nation. If you've not seen his YouTube channel, go check him out. But I'll put a link in the description to these. He has several models of these available for most any battery platform. It's gonna be a great place to store my batteries. On this handle, I messed up and put it too high because the raise and lower lever on the DeWalt hits this. So I had to flip my DeWalt around. So if you have a DeWalt 735, make sure you drop this down below that area. Now it's time to install the drawer pulls. And I chose these because they're low profile. They're not gonna stick out like a knob would. And knobs on a cart like this would tend to snag your apron or a carpenter's loop if you wear like carpenter's pants or your hoodie or something like that. So I wanted to keep these low profile. I think that's the best choice for a cart like this. I found the center, just drilled the holes and installed them, pretty simple to do. I do have this center punch, spring-loaded center punch that I like to use, so that way my drill bit doesn't walk when I start drilling the holes. So I didn't do a whole lot of sanding on this. I just took 120 grit with my palm sander and then just kind of hit those rough edges and those corners just to get that sharp edge off of there. Originally, I thought I was gonna trim this out like I have in the past with walnut and things on the other projects, but I just wanna keep this super simple and cost effective, so I chose not to. So this is gonna look just like this. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and sand over those corners just to get any splinters or sharp edges off. So what I'm thinking is now that it's assembled, there's a ton of weight on this thing. I'm gonna have a planer, a jointer, two tools in the cabinet, clamps and all this other storage. I'm worried about it racking and things like that. Uh, not racking this away, but this away as it rolls on my uneven garage floor. So I've cut some two and a quarter inch strips of plywood and glued them together, doubled up. That way they'll be super strong. 
What I'm gonna do is glue and pocket all screw these into the bottom, one on this side, one on this side, and then I'm gonna take some in the middle and kind of do that. That should give it plenty, plenty of structure, especially over time with all this weight to keep anything from sagging or having any issues at all. I think this will just help shore it up a little bit. So I added two long runners and then two cross runners and tied everything in together. These were actually scrap pieces from an old bed frame that I had. If you saw the day bed video a long time ago, uh, these were just scrap pieces from that and they already had pocket holes drilled on the end. So I just decided to use these instead of cutting up some good plywood. I just glued and screwed all this together. My hope is this will keep everything kind of solid under here. It just gives it a kind of a spine or a backbone underneath the bottom of this tool chest. We'll let this dry for an hour or two, just let the glue set and then we'll flip it back over and load it up. Now it's time to load this thing up. This is exactly what I've been building it for. First, the DeWalt planer goes on one side and then the Wahuda eight inch jointer goes on the other side. In the bottom, I've decided to put my air compressor and my spindle sander because I don't use those that often, but they will be accessible to me easily right here and they're stored out of the way. To mount the jointer, I'm just using the inch and a quarter pocket hole screws, screwed down into the plywood. It won't take much to hold it, but this will keep it secure. And the screws are short enough that they're not gonna drive through and interfere with the drawer. All right, loading up the cart here on the end, I'm just gonna use this slot here for my 24 inch rules. That'll keep those in there nice and secure. On this end, I built these shelves for several different things. I think on the top shelf, I'll put my mallet in there, a tape measure and a spare Milwaukee battery. For the middle shelf, I'm gonna use that for the sanding eraser for the spindle sander, maybe a setup block, a trig square and a box cutter. On the bottom shelf, I'm gonna put my credit setup blocks down there. And of course, I got plenty of room for more stuff later. It's obviously the back because this is where the dust ports come out of the jointer and planer. In this drawer, I've put my safety gear. We also have access to our parts bin on this side, as well as storage for quart size cans, spray paint cans on the bottom, and then of course, awesome clamp storage. On this end, I've left that blank because mine's going up against a wall. That's a whole lot of space for more storage if you so chose. And back to the front, we have our access to our controls on our planer, as well as in this drawer, I've put the push blocks for the jointer in there. Here's a power tip. Since we got a rolling cart, I went ahead and installed magnet on this one. I'm gonna get one for that side. This is the only one I had. That way the doors don't pop open when you roll this thing around. If you like this build, check out the first tool cart I ever made right there. Clicking that box gets you the big old virtual fist bump. We've come a long way here at 731. Also, another one of my favorite shop projects right there.